Hey everyone, Pretty Alice here. I'm recording on my laptop today. This is the first time I've ever used it, so I'm not real sure how it works. Sorry, I keep looking down. I'm looking at the screen. I've got... I'm doing the empath. How to know if you're an empath thing. I saw a Fina Beth Black's video, and she is so right about being an empath. Um, I went to that website, she said, and that she linked. And some of these things are so me. I just want to, I want to talk about some of the things that are on here and some of the things that um, relate to me and some, that, some of the ones that don't. So um, I'm going to go down the list. There's, there's really only 30 and I'm not going to, you know, elaborate. I mean, I'm going to elaborate on them, but not, not a lot on the ones that don't apply to me. So the first one is knowing. Empaths just know stuff without being told. And then it says a little bit more about it. But um, so for me, I don't have a whole lot of that. Um, a little bit, but not not a lot. Being in public places can be overwhelming. Places like shopping malls, supermarkets, or stadiums where there are lots of people. That has always been a problem for me. I've suffered from anxiety my whole life until I found out about that being an empath was a thing. I didn't know what it was. Um, I'm s still to this day on anxiety medication because of it, which suppresses my empathic abilities. But um, without it, I haven't learned to control being an empath just by myself without the medication. So that to an ability where I'm able to like even just leave my house. I get so anxious that I can't, that I just get so nervous. I just can't do anything, I can't be around people, I mean, it's just, it's awful. Feeling others' emotions and taking them on as your own. Yes, this is a huge one. Um, I think, I, this is like the main one for all empaths. I think if you don't have this, you're really pretty much not an empath. Um, sorry, I don't look at the camera, I'm not used to looking right there. I tend to look up this direction when I'm thinking. <laughs> And recalling stuff. Um, yeah. Watching violence, cruelty, and tragedy on the TV is unbearable. That, for me, I don't, I don't tend to watch a lot of that stuff. So, it is, it's not, I wouldn't say unbearable. I mean, I can watch it, but I don't like to. Um, it was worse as a child. My mother loves that kind of stuff. The gorier, the better. The worse the story, the younger the kid... The more horrific, the better. She loves it. So she loves reading She loves reading obituaries, loves telling me all that stuff. So as a kid, she would tell me that kind of stuff. Like, you know, some kid got fell out of a boat and got ran over by the motor and his blood and guts were going everywhere and all this stuff. Like a true story, she'd tell me this out of newspapers and stuff. And like, she told me a story like that one time. It scared me so bad, I refused to go to, our le to the lake where our boat was for almost a year. You know, we almost had to sell our boat and stop going and everything because I refused to go and like she'd tell me stories of people drowning and just all kinds of stuff like no matter how good of a swimmer you are if you have a life jacket on no matter what you will drown if you so much as touch a toe in the lake just stuff like that like you know and she'd scare me after death and with this stuff just by telling it to me um you know when someone is not being honest oh my gosh yes uh, especially with family and close friends. With strangers, it's a little harder, but not impossible. Um, the closer you are with someone, the easier it is to tell. I can tell with my mother, even if she's not in the room with me. I can just hear her voice. I know if she's lying to someone. I can tell when she's on the phone with me. I know if she is lying to me. I can be like, Mom, you are lying your ass off. Sorry, language. Picking up physical symptoms off another. Um, this has happened to me a couple times, but only a couple times in my almost 25 years of life, so it doesn't usually happen to me. Digestive disorders and lower back problems. I used to get this all the time. Digestive disorders as a kid, all the time. But it doesn't really happen so much anymore. Always looking out for the underdog. I, I guess I do, but I don't know if it's related to being an empath or if it's just part of my personality. 
Others will always want to offload their problems on you, even strangers. Mm, I don't know so if that really relates to me or not. Constant fratitude. Empaths often get drained of energy. Yes, so much. So much. I get, I get like, I'll get geared up to do something and I'll get so excited and then like, you know, and then I go out in public and go shopping or something and then like an hour later I'm like so drained. I feel like I've been, I've been running a marathon for 24 hours. Addictive personality. Alcohol, drugs, sex are to name a few addictions that empaths are empaths turn to to block out the emotions of others. It's a form of protection to hide in to hide from someone or something. Um, that doesn't relate to me. I get addicted to like um like what do you call what do you call it like um Adrenaline, I guess. I was an adrenaline junkie a while back, like years ago. Drawn to healing, holistic therapies, and all things metaphysical. Hello, I'm a pagan witch. I'd, I'd say yes. Creative, from singing, dancing, acting, drawing, or writing. Um, all of the above. So yes, obviously I'm very creative, always have been. Love of nature and animals, yes and yes. Need for solitude, yes. I am very much an introvert. I have to go and be by myself to, I've always called it recharging, getting away from people. I always say I have to go recharge. I've always called it that since I was really little. Um, I go like in my room and I'll be like, oh my gosh, I have to get away from people. I have to go recharge. And my mom thinks, my mom thinks that's really funny. Gets bored or distracted easily if not stimulated. Um, I think I think I do, yeah. I would I don't know, it's not like super easily, but kinda yeah. Finds it impossible to do things they don't enjoy, as above. Not impossible. I mean I could do something I don't enjoy, but I'd be bo it'd be boring. Strives for the truth. This becomes more prevalent when an empath discovers his her gifts and birthright. Anything untruthful feels plain wrong. Um, I don't know what they mean by birthright. I don't really know how to describe, answer that one. Always looking for answers and knowledge. I'd say yes. Likes adventure, freedom, and travel. Empaths are free spirits. Yes. Adhors clutter. I don't like clutter. I mean, it really bothers me, but I'm terrible at making it. I'm, I, I, I make clutter like crazy, but I hate it. It's so it's, it's like this vicious cycle with me. I, it's ridiculous. Loves to daydream. Yes. Finds routine, rules, or control imprisoning. Ugh. Yes. Well, no, no. I like routine. I like routine. But I, I don't like rules or control. Unless they're the ones I make myself. Prone to carry weight without necessarily overeating. Ugh. Yes, unfortunately. Excellent listener. Yes, I, I do say so myself. Intolerance to narcissism. Yes. The ability to feel the days of the week. An empath will get the Friday feeling. Um, I have no idea. Will not choose to buy antiques, vintage, or secondhand. Um... I love antiques if they're like ones that are passed down from my grandparents and stuff that, that are like family heirlooms, but I, I, and I love, I love the idea of antiques, but oftentimes I, I hate the, I, I hate the, the feeling of them. They just get, they have this feeling on them and I like can't bear to touch them. But at the same time, I love looking at antique shops because the stuff just looks so cool. I, I love the way old stuff looks, you know? Like, I wish stuff like that was made like that today. You can appear moody, moody, shy, aloof, or disconnected. Yes. I, as a kid, I was always labeled as shy, moody, um, not special, but, <laughs> um, They would always say I was like 
super shy and let's see what else does this even say that was number 30 depending on how an empath is feeling will depend on what face they will show the world oh my gosh that is so true I'm a, I've once I described um, described it as saying like with with different people you show depends on what mask you put on it's like um it's like you have one mask with one person and one mask with another sometimes it can be that way um the one of the my psychiatrists um even diagnosed me with bipolar disorder which is a mood disorder mood swings which i don't believe i actually have um I think it's just because of the being because of being an empath and absorbing other people's emotions, especially um, some people are what they call psychic vampires, where they I believe I believe what that means. Sorry, the screen is that um, they project their energy so fiercely like more than other people that it's like they're spraying a perfume of their energy so it's as if somebody's going around spraying a perfume 24 7 and it's like whereas somebody else is just is just naturally wearing one whereas another person is just is spraying theirs all the time and so like one person you can smell their perfume you know but somebody else if they're spraying it all the time it's like you know, you, you can definitely smell it. It's, it's like, it's there. It's in your face. They're spraying it in your face. Instead of it just being there, they're spraying it in your face. So, that, that it's, it's, it's hard to describe. I mean, if, if you don't, if you've never experienced it, you'll, you'll never truly understand this. Um, so, my mom is one of the ones who is, who like, sprays it in your face all the time. Negative energy. Even if, even if she looks positive, other people are always like, oh my gosh, your mom is so nice. She's so sweet. And I'm just like, you do not know her. She exudes this negative energy. She just, it rolls off her just like waves of this negative energy just all the time. She can be smiling, laughing, looking like she's having a good time. She can be in the middle of a party, a birthday party for her with all her favorite stuff surrounding her. She'll just be exuding this negative energy just rolling off in waves and waves. It's just like this perfume spray, just like clouding the entire room. And it spreads, it spreads and spreads. And she can then leave the house. But it's but she's sprayed that perfume everywhere, you know? And she may be gone, but that energy is still there. You know, and so it's like, it, it just tangles me up in knots. And it's just, oh gosh, all the time. And it's like the house is filled with it because... Like I say, she has sprayed that negative energy perfume, and although she goes to work, you know, I'm still here, and she has already sprayed the perfume, so although her and that perfume bottle itself are removed, the perfume itself is still here, the negative energy. That's the best way I can really describe it. It's just, it's choking, and it can be any, it doesn't necessarily have to be negative. Anyone can exclude any type of energy. I mean, it could be positive, it could be negative, it could be sad, it could be angry. It could be anything, but with my mother, it's just negative energy all the time. And it is, it is choking. So, um, anyway, yeah. Um, but like Athena Beth Black was saying, I love to collect the, and like I was saying with the antiques, I love, I love collecting antiques that belong to like, my grandparents and stuff, you know, pa family heirlooms, that's what they're called. I was going to say pass down things. Family heirlooms, but um, I love keeping journals and scrapbooking, love being creative. Uh, yeah, I think, let me just check my list. I made a little list too. Oh, as she was saying about the lucid dreams, um, and very vivid dreams, I definitely have vivid dreams. 
I almost always remember my dreams, at least, you know, part, most of them. I don't always remember them in order. I remember them sometimes out of order, but then I, I can easily piece them back together when I wake up. And, um, music. I love music. I literally listen to music about anywhere from 20 to 22 hours a day. I listen to it all throughout the night. And, because if I listen to it with my earbuds in, and if it turns off in the middle of the night, it wakes me up. And then I can't sleep without it. And then, I just not like music with lyrics, just, you know, like soft classical. I listen to it when I meditate, and the silence bothers me a lot. So, and I'm sorry I keep looking off camera. It's just, it's really weird for me to just stare at the computer screen while I'm talking. And I need to think, and I look to the side when I think, like I said before. Um... So, I forget what I was saying, but, <laughs> oh right, music. So, the silence really bothers me, and I listen to music a lot, and so I love music. Love music without lyrics, love music with lyrics. I can really relate to the lyrics. Um, but yeah, like she was saying, um, music's really easy. It can, like, bring me to tears really easy. Not so much when I just, like, think about a song, but... Like, she started to cry. That was cute. But, um, I don't know how to actually turn this into a video response. So, I'm just gonna do it, you know, like a regular video. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. It's 17 minutes long, nearly. Please comment, rate, subscribe. All of that good stuff. Bye.